Um, well, thank you very much for having me today. And let me start by um, echoing the, the welcomes of, of James, Lucy and, and Yvette. Um, as mentioned, my name is Edwina Trenchard-Smith and I'm a senior consultant at Deloitte. Um, I've been working in the human capital industry now for about seven years. But as you've heard, over the last couple of years, my passion and my focus has really turned to diversity and inclusion. Um, and particularly, looking at flexible work practices and telework as part of that. Um, so part of you know, working with Deloitte has given me a great opportunity because I've been able to work with some fantastic clients and have access to some fantastic thought leadership as well. The Deloitte Human Capital Consulting Practice is actually one of the largest human capital consulting practices in the world and it gives me the great advantage to be able to leverage that international thought and tap into my colleagues around the world and find out what they're doing. So it's been a real, a real interest and a real passion of mine, diversity and inclusion, and it's continuing to grow. And I think we're now in a really good place to, to leverage that. So today I want to shine a little bit of a light on um, telework from an industry perspective and um, look at how you know, telework interacts with corporate strategy and a bit of, a, a bit of an overview around, um, around telework, my thoughts, where I see it going, and hopefully um, what we need to do to get there. So from my perspective, when I think about um, when I think about teleworking, I think that the landscape today is changing. As it has been for the, as Lucy mentioned, for the last 20 years, telework has been around. But what we're seeing are different trends that are emerging today that are enabling telework now more than ever. So the two trends that I want to call out and talk about are really around um, demographics and also around technology. And using demographics and technology, what we want to do is really think about a new way of working. How do we leverage telework and what does the future of work actually look like for industry, for people in the workplace? What does that mean for us? So the benefits of this new way of working and telework are, are not new. They're old. We know about them. We've been championing them for some time. Um, but the challenges are many and that's why we're really not getting that traction that we need. So what I want to touch on today is well, how do we actually reach our goal and what does that mean for corporate strategy? So as I mentioned, the, the changing landscape, I just wanted to call out a couple of demographic, um, a couple of trends, and really these are only two of a mass of trends that are happening within the, the workplace at the moment and also within society. This is not just about industry, it's about who we are as people and how we interact. So the first one I want to call out is really changes in the nature of work. So if we look back to the 60s and we think about what the average Australian um, looked like then. The average Australian was typically a, um, a male that was around the age of 29 in the workforce. If we look at ABS statistics, statistics today and think about well, what is the average Australian today, what does that typically look like, what we actually see is the average Australian is actually a woman. She's married with two kids. She lives in the suburbs near one of our um, capital cities. So that gives you a bit of an indication that we're, we're shifting over time. The ageing population. So one of the um, key drivers, which everybody in the room would be aware about, is our ageing population. And the fact that we do have all of these fantastic baby boomers who will be exiting the workforce over the coming years. The harsh reality of the ageing population, though, is that we don't actually have enough um, Gen X and Gen Y coming through to replace them. At the moment, again, the ABS quotes... Um, actually, the Deloitte Access Economics has done a piece of research that shows that for every 100 people retiring, there's actually only 125 that are currently in existing education to replace those roles. That's actually the lowest ratio we've ever had in the history of Australia, which is quite a significant thing for industry um, and something that they've been focusing on heavily. And really what that's led to for industry is to say, well, actually, there is a real shortage of talent out there. And so we hear about this, this term, the war on talent. We've heard about the war on talent for a long time. But what we're actually finding is that today, right now, 20% of businesses are actually reporting that they're unable to find the skilled labour that they need to fill the roles that they've got. So industry is really at a point now where they're thinking, wow, things are changing. What am I going to do to address some of these challenges that I've got? And then on the other hand, we've got technological changes. And what we're really seeing from a technological perspective is the impact of mobile devices and the ever-increasing use of mobile devices um, from Gen X, Gen Y and, and going further up the ladder. 
So from a mobile device perspective, um, the business impacts of that are, are huge. You know, people are able to access new technologies in different ways. Everybody has a mobile device with them. Some people have two, one for work, one for personal use. And what we're finding, it's not only the, um, the ability to have these mobile devices with you all the time, but it's actually the way that mobile devices are now connecting with everything else. Through your mobile device, you can connect to the internet, you can connect to home, you can connect to work, you can upload photos, you can share things with friends. And it's having a huge impact, not only on business and the way that we do work, in terms of how we communicate, what files we can share and how we interact with each other, but also socially on the way that we communicate and the way that we operate as individuals. So it's really about the, the use of mobile devices and the connectivity of those mobile devices to your home and your work life. The final trend that I wanted to, to point out to you is around um, the use of technology in the home. And what we've typically starting to see is that we're actually becoming very sophisticated technological users. And so much so that individually, we're becoming more sophisticated than the workplace. The Deloitte Access Economics recently did a report um, this year that looked at the home and the workplace and what a connected workplace looked like. And it actually found that overall, people felt that their home technology was actually more up to date, more user friendly and faster than the technology that they're using at work. And this has actually led to a real, a real drive and a real trend around IT policies within organisations. The need for organisations to open themselves up and say, well, actually, maybe we need to implement a policy of bring your own device to work. How do we let people connect using the sophisticated tools that they've already got and they're comfortable with and leverage that as part of the workplace and part of what we do? So those two key trends are really changing the landscape for us today and leading to what we're hoping will be a new way of working. Now, as I said, telework is not a new thing. Workplace flexibility is not a new thing. But hopefully, with the trends that are happening in the environment at the moment, we're setting the groundwork. We're creating a bit of a perfect storm to actually get this, this new way of working right. So what is the new way of working? Well, the new way of working is about, is about responding to this changing landscape. And to do that, my opinion is that employees need to leverage the advances in technology to address some of the barriers that they're having around the talent pool. I read this statistic on a plane the other day and I thought it was fantastic as it just encapsulates what teleworking and flexible work practice is about. Um, this was in the Voyager magazine. It said 75% of non-labour force Australians with family or carer responsibilities would, would be happy to telework if offered a super, suitable opportunity. So that's 75% of people who are currently not in the workforce. What does that do to your talent pool if you're able to attract that population back to the workforce? So when we look at and think about this new way of working, what does the new work environment look like? Well, the new work environment needs to, to change and offer flexibility in two ways. It needs to look at how you work. So when we think about how you work, there's no one size fits all. What we know based on research that's been done at the moment is that the employee of tomorrow is more diverse than ever before. And as the employee of tomorrow is more diverse than ever, ever before, the arrangements to support that employee are also going to be more diverse than ever before. So we're looking at whether it be part-time, full-time, job share, individualised work schedules, flexible or compressed working weeks, you know, all of these options need to be available to open up that talent pool and allow organisations to meet the demands that they've got and leverage um, the benefits of flexible work arrangements. Where you work is also the big thing. And Yvette mentioned it earlier, um, it's no longer about working from home or working in the office. Yes, they're your two obvious choices, but what we're seeing is that the workplace of the future could be anywhere, absolutely anywhere, and that companies and organisations are actually getting more sophisticated around providing the opportunities to connect um, outside the office, um, creating you know, cafes or, or hubs that people who are um, remote, located remotely can connect to without coming into the workplace but finding some connection with the organisation in any case. 
So what we're really seeing is that telework is not about home, um, it's not about the office, it's about the ability to access and connect anywhere. And what that means for the future of the workplace is also that it's going to become a very different space. If we've got um, people teleworking flexibly wherever they want to be, when you come to work, the function of being in the office could be quite different. The function of being in the office for our organisation now is actually about providing connectivity, providing that opportunity to collaborate face-to-face, -face, generate new ideas um, and build relationships so that you can actually go away and telework um, and continue to contribute um, on your own. Through social media, through the internet, you know, despite the fact that we think working from home, you're not in isolation. You can still continue to collaborate and work with others to um, you know, draw out best class ideas from around the globe using the internet, using the technology that you've got at your fingertips and providing that back to your organisation. So it's a new, way of, um, a new way of thinking about these things. How you work and where you work is fundamentally going to change the nature of the office and the kind of spaces that organisations are creating um, to bring people together. Uh, I read a, a really nice stat about uh, telework the other day that said in the United States, um, from 2005 to 2011, 73% uh, um, growth has been experienced in regular telecommuting in the US. And that's compared to an overall growth in the workforce of 4.3%. So what we're seeing is that there is a bit of momentum, there is a bit of a shift towards telework, and this workplace of the future is going to be critical. So now I know I'm preaching to the converted, and I don't need to tell you all of the, um, all of the wonderful things, but the facts are there and, and the evidence is there, and I'm, I'm just going to give you a few of my favourite ones that have been proven. You know, we always talk about the benefits and, you know, we, we talk about how we quantify them, but they're real. The research supports it. We just need to get traction and get people to listen to make it happen. So when we talk about um, employee satisfaction, you know, Im improved employee satisfaction is critical. Um, World at Work found that companies that embrace flexibility have lower turnover, higher employee satisfaction and more motivation. We also find that, you know, when we leverage technology with our workforce, we get better collaboration and better productivity. Um, in a Deloitte Access Economics report that was recently published, they showed that satisfied workers, workers satisfied with their IT policy, believe it or not, actually collaborated much more than workers that didn't. You know, the collaboration of those workers was 28% um, versus 12% for those who were not happy with their, their IT policy. Um, Melbourne University and um, IBES also conducted um, a series of interviews in 2002 that found that personal perspective from, from individuals, um, individual team, individual and team productivity were positive, indicating that, you know, telework was a viable option for face-to-face -face employment. Improved employee retention. Again, Access Economics um, has showed us that employees that were happier with their workplace IT policy, with their workplace flexibility, were one third more likely to stay with their organisation because of that happiness, which has serious implications and costs for industry. When we think about work-life balance, IBM actually did a study, um, a huge study in 2009, of 25,000 individuals across 75 different countries. And they looked at the difference between organisations that um, had no flexibility, where you worked nine to five and that was what all you did, and organisations that provided autonomy around how you actually do your role. And what they found was that the conflict between work-life balance was actually experienced much, much later. The conflict for work, between work and um, life was experienced for those that didn't have autonomy at that sort of 37.5 hours a week. But for those that could work wherever they wanted, whenever they wanted and however they wanted, they didn't experience the same conflict until half a day or up to two days later at 54 hours, which is quite huge. Now, there's a two-edged coin to that because we don't want people working 24-7 and that's also part of one of the challenges, but it does show that with freedom comes productivity and the ability and the willingness to, um, to be productive and work on the things that you're interested in. 
There's also health improvements. You know, the, um, the departments of health in the United States did a longitudinal study and found that people who had control of where and how and when they worked were much less stressed. Over the long term, it was a 25-year longitudinal study, those that had control of their work environments were less likely to have um, diabetes, heart attacks, um, heart disease, whereas those that weren't were much more likely to fall victim to those things. So the study showed that in the short term, when we talk about flexibility, we talk about absenteeism um, and a happy workplace, but in the long term, we're actually talking about fundamental health benefits for individuals. So. The benefits are real. Just looking at a, at a best, best practice example, I want to just shine a light on Cisco for a second, who has 90% of their employees are engaged in some form of telework, and they've got over 75,000 employees across the globe. And the Cisco CEO came out the other day and he said, you know, telework, this telework culture has saved his company billions, with an estimated one billion in real estate reductions, if you're teleworking you don't need to be in the office. An estimated two point, um, uh, sorry, 220 million in reduced travel, um, 250 million in productivity um, using collaborative technologies, and it saved commuters um, roughly 79 hours each traveling to and from work. And what they actually found was that 69 of those hours were actually spent working instead of traveling uh, because people could. So some really positive benefits. But as we know, there are some serious challenges. Um, and the challenges, you know, the main challenges that I see for organisations from an industry perspective are actually around enabling that technology. As individuals, we are sophisticated users, but when you times that by the multitude of, of a workforce, um, you end up with tensions. Um, having an IT department that can support, bring your own devices, that can provide you with um, the right technology to connect you, for some companies is a barrier. There's also that perceptual barrier. You know, when you think about banks and different industries that have really complicated data um, with privacy issues, personal information, banking um, and finance information, and you think about working remotely and having people being able to access and tap into that from anywhere, there's that perceptual hesitation to go, well, is it safe? Is it secure? How do we overcome those barriers? To my earlier point, there's that, um, there's that piece around managing expectations being more connected, having a mobile phone on you all the time where you can look at your emails and chat to friends, you know, it means you're on 24-7 as well. How do we bridge that divide between saying we're offering you flexibility but we're not expecting you to work 24-7? How do we manage those expectations within organisations and for individuals to set the right boundaries of what the workplace of the future looks like? Um, tracking success, making sure that we're selling those success stories. Changing management styles, you know, shifting from command and control to autonomy, respect and trust, um, and then managing the resistance that you get at every level. So how do we achieve our goals? We know the benefits, we know, um, we know the challenges. In my mind, there are three key elements to this. And if we can get these three elements right, then industries will have a much better chance of implementing teleworking and other flexible work practices successfully. So the first one is around people and is around mindsets. So how do we shift the mindset? What I've seen through my work with Deloitte and through my work with a variety of clients is that leadership is key. Being visible, being out the front and having a stand on what does my organisation want to look like? How do my people want to work and how will we operate? But leadership's not enough. Middle managers is where the buck stops. Middle managers is actually where people experience um, what the workplace is like. Middle managers define if I enjoy my job or if I don't, and if I understand what flexible arrangements are out there and if I can access them. And then finally, frontline, having that education so that they can, they can understand where the company stands on flexibility and telework. <coughs> Framework is key to this. Um, the framework, having the right policies and procedures to guide employees and guide middle managers on what they can and can't do is critical. Policies and procedures ensure that it's not about I like you so you get this arrangement versus I don't like you so you don't. It's important that this is not a gift, that telework is a viable option for anyone, be it male, female, old, young. You know, we typically think of carer responsibilities as the reason for needing telework. But what if I'm a professional athlete? 
and I've got other responsibilities. You know, what if I actually have things outside of work that I enjoy and want to pursue my passion as well? Why should I be marginalised because I don't have children or I don't have an elder person that I need to care for? Um, and then finally, infrastructure, which goes back to the tools and technology to make the framework live and to make the vision live. So what does it mean for corporate strategy? Very simply, um, telework and flexible work arrangements affect every part um, of a corporation, so they cannot be thought of in isolation. You know, I've thrown up a couple of um, departments on the, the screen there to give you an idea, but when you're thinking about teleworking and you're thinking about flexible practices, you're talking about the vision and values of the organisation. How do we work? What do we value? Is it bums on seats or is it output? And that starts that leadership conversation at the top. But then you flow into, well, your HR strategy. What does that mean in how we attract and retain people? How do we leverage telework? It flows into your IT policy, which then says, well, how are we going to support this vision and what are we going to do? And it also flows into your operations department where you think of, well, if we are leveraging this telework and flexible work practices, what does it mean in terms of bums on seats, the facilities that we need, how we're going to connect and what the office actually looks like now? So telework really can't be considered in isolation. It can't be thought of as an HR issue because it requires so many aspects within a corporation to get there. It needs to be thought of as part of corporate strategy holistically. So thank you very much for your time. I'm going to leave it there because I know we are running a little bit over, um, but I appreciate you having me today and hopefully I've given you a little bit of a framework to think about things from an industry perspective and a bit of food for thought. Thank you. Thank you.